Options trading can be extremely lucrative. Some days you might make a thousand percent profits, and other days you might just blow up your account and lose everything. I'm only burning my half. In this video though, I'm gonna give you the story of some of my biggest wins, my biggest losses, the lessons that I learned from these. After that, we're gonna get into the juicy part of this video, my simple four-step options trading routine. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna talk about the risks of trading options because I feel like not enough people touch on this. Now, my experience with trading is kind of hit or miss. So some days I've made over $2,000 in profit, sometimes even more up to $3,000 in profit in one day. In other days, I've lost about $2,000. And I attribute a lot of my losses and wins to a coin. There's two sides to every coin. And for trading, you have luck and you have risk. You need to find a balance between these. You might have heard the old saying, stocks can stay irrational for as long as you can stay solvent. Or, in other words, stocks can not do what you expect them to until you blow up your portfolio and lose everything. Let me explain this with an actual day trading story though. It was a beautiful Wednesday morning. I had started the day off with my usual morning routine, going to the gym, coming back, and analyzing some stocks. I recognized that the 10-year treasury yield and the dollar had gapped up overnight, and usually whenever this happens, stocks tend to come down. The reason for this is because when borrowing becomes more expensive, it costs companies more money to grow their business, and there's a shorter supply of dollars as the yields go up. So whenever the yield and the dollar go up, stocks typically come down. And this had been the trend for the last two weeks. Every time that the yields and the dollar would gap up, SPY would end up gapping down. But today, it wasn't the case. It was just my luck. I put on a trade assuming that SPY would come down between $360 and $370 sometime by the end of the day because that was the last price that SPY had been at whenever the 10-year treasury yield was at the same rate that it was whenever I opened this trade. So statistically, this should have worked out, but instead, SPY actually ended up trading completely flat that day, closing at the same price that it did the day before. And with my bet on the downside, assuming that SPY would fall to $370 to $365, obviously I didn't win. Instead, I lost a whopping $2,300 in a single day. So I was right in my thinking about my analysis, technically this should have worked out, but luck had it that it didn't. But two days later, SPY actually did come below these strike prices. Because on Friday, the day that SPY actually did come below these prices, unemployment data came out. The good news, the nation's unemployment rate ticked down in September, back to a 50 year low of 3.5%. The bad news, the unemployment rate ticked down to 3.5%. Which means that the Fed has more to do when it comes to raising interest rates to cool off the economy, which ended up sending SPY down by 4% that day. So had I been looking in the future for unemployment data and extended my expiration date for another two days, then I would have made $8,000 for this trade. But I was certain on it coming down the same day that I had opened it, and I ended up losing $2,300. So it was just kind of bad luck that day. I put on too much risk for this trade and I ended up losing out. But let me tell you the story of a really great trade that I made, which is the opposite side of this coin and luck. These lucky sons of bitches caught wind of one of the best trades in Wall Street history from a wrong number. It was September 13th, Fed Chair Powell was scheduled to give a speech at the Jackson Hole event. And I had put on a trade assuming that SPY would fall down by about 4% that day, which most people thought that I was out of my mind because when has SPY ever fallen by 4% in a day? But my thinking behind it was in the third and the fourth week for every single month since the beginning of this bear market starting in January, the average move was above 7%. So since SPY had topped out at $431 a week before, my assumption was that it would fall more than that 7% average move. And I was holding on to this trade for dear life. At one point, the spreads that I had opened were literally going for one penny, but I still held it because I figured that luck would be in my favor. I figured that after listening to the Jay Powell speech, there would be a shift in narrative because before the speech, everybody believed that the Fed would pivot. But after the speech, that sentiment was completely erased. 
And whenever there's a mass change in sentiment, this is when you'll see the most volatile days that you'll ever experience. So after Fed Chair Powell spoke that day, SPY did end up falling by 4% below the strike prices that I chose for my put debit spread. And I ended up coming away with $1,980 in profit that day. But these have just been a couple stories about these trades that I've made. But you're here to learn how to trade options. So let's get into the meat of this video. The first step in trading options is figuring out your risk tolerance. So you need to find out how much money you're willing to lose on any given day. So for me, I have about $60,000 in my total portfolio, including cash, stocks, and options. And on any given option, I'm only willing to risk $2,000. I gotta pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. So that's about 3% of my entire portfolio that I'm willing to risk on any given option. But I am a very risk adverse person. Somebody with less money might be willing to risk a little bit more. But for me, as somebody who has a pretty sizable portfolio, I like to keep my risk relatively low. I've had other people in my Discord though with just $10,000 to their name making three $5,000 trades, which there's nothing really wrong with that, but if you're willing to risk 3,000 to 5,000 on a trade, you can lose that 3,000 to 5,000 dollars. But for me, I'm not willing to risk more than 3% of my total portfolio balance on any given trade. So you need to find out your risk tolerance, and then we can move on to the next step, which is going to be fundamental analysis. Fundamental analysis is all about figuring out what moves the markets in different ways. And this is a process. I've been learning this for about three years and I still have a lot to learn about fundamental analysis. But what I do know is that whenever the yields go up and the dollar goes up, that usually ends up standing stocks down. So I have four stocks on my watch list every day. I have SPY, obviously the S&P 500. I have VIX, which is the volatility of the S&P 500. I have TNX, which is the 10 year treasury yield. And then finally, I have UUP, which is a derivative of the dollar. So I'm watching these every single day, no fail, and watching how they correlate with one another. Again, typically, whenever yields in the dollar go up, stocks tend to come down because borrowing is more expensive. The dollar is more sparse because it becomes more expensive to borrow dollars. And this usually sends up VIX with it or the volatility. So these three have a positive correlation with one another. Whenever TNX goes up, usually UUP and VIX will go up with it. But this has a negative correlation with the S&P 500 or SPY. So whenever these three are going up, SPY tends to come down. There's a lot more that comes in with fundamental analysis though. Like today, the markets were solely focused on what Bank of America was doing in their trading after their earnings report. So it's not all just based on the 10 year treasury yield and the dollar. And again, this doesn't always work. Remember, I lost $2,300 because I assumed that SPY would drop because the 10 year treasury yield gapped up overnight. But this will give you a solid base of what to look at each day. Then you need to follow the news on what's going on with the rest of the market. And then you will be a good fundamental trader. Once you figure out what moves the markets in which directions, then you need to figure out how much the market is going to move. And the way that you do this is going to be technical analysis. Now for me, I like to keep technical analysis very, very simple. I don't use moving average lines. I don't use VWAP. I don't use trend lines or patterns. The only thing that I use is price levels. Oh! So first I determine which way this is stock market moving based on the fundamentals. And then I determine how much the stock market is gonna move based on my price levels. And the way that I come up with my price levels is going by the opening and closing candle of each day, which are very important price levels. And then I also add in the averages of large candles. So if there's a much larger candle than the usual candle, typically this will create a new support or resistance line at the mid price or the average between the opening price and the closing price of that large candle. So I go by these support and resistance levels in order to open my trade. And then I figure out what price I'm willing to pay for a given option based on probability. So I usually trade debit spreads or credit spreads with a $1 difference between the strike prices. And 
The way that I use probabilities in spreads is I determine what I think is the probability of the trade working out. So if I think that there's say a 60% chance that a trade is going to work out, but the contracts are only going for something like 40 cents, that means that there's a 50% arbitrage between what I'm thinking and what the markets are telling me. So what I'll do is I'll try to open it at 40 cents each for a $1 spread, and I'll try to close it for 60 cents or 60% of the spread width, which represents my estimated probability of the trade working out or not. So that's how I day trade. First, I set up how much money I'm willing to risk. I determine which way the stock market is going to go with fundamental analysis. I determine how much the stock market might move with technical analysis and support and resistance levels. And then I end that with figuring out what is the probability of this trade working out or not, and then opening and closing my trades accordingly. But this strategy might not work for everybody because for me, I think in terms of math, pretty much all the time. I'm always thinking about numbers and the strategy might not work for somebody else that's not as well versed in mathematics. But this definitely works for me and it can also work against me sometimes because with literally any strategy there is always risk. So let's talk about the risks of trading options. The risks of often trading might not be so obvious if you're used to trading stocks because if you're trading stocks the likelihood of that stock going to zero in the same day is incredibly small, almost 0%. But with options trading, there's a much greater chance of losing everything that you put into a trade. Now, I can't give you an exact estimate of what is the likelihood of your option going to zero because every trade is made different, but just realize that you can lose whatever you put into your option. So if you decide that you want to put your entire life savings, $100,000 in one day trade on an option, you can lose that $100,000 in the same day. Yay! This is why I keep my position sizes small to just 3% of my portfolio. This means that I could lose 30 trades in a row and still be perfectly fine. The likelihood of me losing 30 trades in a row is incredibly small. It's not zero, but with a win rate of 70%, I would say it's much closer to zero. So this is a way that I preserve my wealth by keeping my position sizes small. Other people might decide to put up a bit more if they're more risque, but for me, I'm a very risk adverse person and I'm not willing to give up more than about 3% of my portfolio at any given time. So preserving your wealth should be your number one goal whenever it comes to trading and investing. And then second to that is going to be gains. And a lot of your gains are going to come from very unlikely events. Like for me, again, I made $2,000 whenever SPY fell by 4% that day. And the odds of SPY falling 4% that day was maybe about 2%. That was probably a third standard deviation move for SPY that day. But this made me a crap ton of money. So I got really lucky and luck and risk play a much larger role in your trading than you might be led on to believe. So you need to find a balance between luck, risk, and how much money you're willing to give up on any given trade and then you'll be a successful day trader and an options trader. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of this video and thanking all my patrons for their support. And as always, remember to stay positive, stay green. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye guys. Oh.